Well, hello, everybody. This is uh, Louis Schroeder here in New Jersey in the United States, and this is episode one of SC Internacional in English. So stay tuned for the show. Everybody, this is Louis Schroeder. Uh, it's uh, June second, twenty twenty one, and this is the first episode of SC Internacional in English. SC Internacional, as you probably know if you're watching this, is a Brazilian soccer club, one of the biggest Brazilian teams uh, that exist. And the question you might have is, why am I going to have a program about? A Brazilian team in English? Well, I'll explain. There's two reasons. Reason number one, uh, Brazilian soccer is world famous. Everybody knows Brazilian soccer. Everybody knows the Brazilian national team. Everybody knows the yellow jersey. Uh, if you want information on the Brazilian national team, you can get it very easily anywhere on the internet, in English, in Portuguese, in any language that you might want. But Brazilian soccer clubs do not get the same recognition as uh, the Brazilian national team gets. And I've always had a problem with that. Uh, I've asked, I live in the United States, I've asked Americans about what clubs do they know from Brazil. And um, they know very few. They might be able to name a team here or there, but they know very little about the history. They know very little about what's going on. They're more concerned about teams in Europe, uh, teams in England, Spain, Italy, that kind of stuff, and the teams in the United States, and nothing about Brazilian teams. So that's what this is for. Uh, this is for uh, soccer fans around the world that might be interested in Brazilian soccer, and in particularly in, a, in a Brazilian club soccer, and can't get any information or watch any videos or see anything up to date about Brazilian teams. So on this program, on this uh, maybe weekly, bi-weekly uh, program, I'll be talking about Internacional and uh, what's going on with the team uh, in English. I am doing this live, no script, so I will take comments and questions during the live broadcast, but because this is in English, I'm only going to take questions in English and read comments that are also in English, okay? And the second reason, so that was the first reason. The second reason is also for the international fans uh, in Brazil and around the world to have something a little different. You know, we got plenty of information that, uh, that you know, in, in Portuguese. So why not in English? This is actually a nice little uh, way for Brazilians to, um, you know, practice their English, maybe. Uh, you know, I've lived in the United States practically my entire life, and I was lucky enough to live in Brazil for six years in the 1980s, end of 1970s and up to the mid-80s. So I was lucky enough to live in Brazil, and that's when I became a fan of Internacional. And uh, I was able to also, uh, I already knew Portuguese at the time, uh, but I was able to... Um, get much better at it at the time. So therefore, I speak uh, fluent Portuguese and fluent English. But in this program, we're going to do it all in English. And hopefully, people in Japan, I know Inter has fans in Japan. I know Inter has fans in the United States. And some of these fans, maybe a lot of them, would like to know about what's going on with Inter, but they can't because they can't find anything in a language they understand. So hopefully, uh, people searching on YouTube later on will find this, and it will be useful. Now, today's episode, I'm going to talk about two things, okay? Since it's the first episode, the first thing I'm going to talk about is some of the history 
of SC Internacional. We're going to go through the history uh, briefly. We're going to go decade through decade, starting when the, the club was founded, and we're going to go all, all the way to modern day. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. And then the second thing we're going to talk about is a little bit about how the club is today, what's going on with it, what are the results on the field, um, how are we doing, and all that stuff. So we're going to cover history, and we're going to cover today. All right, so uh, why don't we get started? Let me run the opening one more time, and we'll get started. folks uh, so welcome to SC Internacional English episode one and we're going to talk about the history of the club I'm going to go through the uh, briefly the 112 years that the club exists but I'm going to go by decade and we're just going to run through it and we're doing this in English for those just tuning in now and uh, basically let's let's run down here the whole thing uh, Internacional was founded in uh, 1909 so about 112 years ago and legend has it that the reason that Internacional came to exist was because uh, a group of, uh, of uh, young men that wanted to play soccer uh, weren't able to play uh, at the local club that existed in Porto Alegre. Internacional, by the way, is from Porto Alegre in southern Brazil. And in 1909, when soccer and sports in Brazil and around the world were just start, was just starting to take off, um, these young men, uh, I believe they were even brothers, uh, the Pope brothers, uh, they wanted to play organized soccer, but the team in Porto Alegre that existed at the time, the main one, uh, our current rival, Grêmio, they... Uh, would, would not allow them to play on their team or in their club. And the reason for that was because uh, the Pope brothers were not of German descent. Now, for those that are not from, the, from Brazil, let me just uh, give you a little, little explanation here. Brazil is a country uh, very similar in immigration to, say, the United States. Um, in the 19th century, uh, lots of Europeans left Europe and went, came to the Americas. Some came to the United States, some, came, some went to, to, to South America. And in Brazil, and particularly in, in the southern part of Brazil, uh, a lot of German people went, and a lot of Italian descendants, uh, a lot of Italian people went to um, southern Brazil also. So Italians and Germans in southern Brazil uh, it's quite a big group. Uh, towns were created uh, based on, you know, uh, Italian and uh, German immigration. So in Porto Alegre, we had Gremio, uh, which was basically run by uh, descendants, uh, German descendants. And apparently they did not want any part of any other type of, uh, you know, nationality uh, in the club. So what happened was the Pope brothers, which I believe m might be it of Italian descent, uh, decided to start uh, Sport Club Internacional. And the name, uh, the name, uh, it's, a, it's a good match for the reason why the club was formed. And uh, Inter's, um, the whole idea was to accept all types of people uh, from any, you know, any kind of immigrant, uh, you could be German, you could be Italian, you could be Polish, and Brazil had all of that um, at the time, uh, immigrating from around the world into all parts of Brazil. So in 1909, Internacional was formed, and that's where the story begins. The, our rival was formed in 1903, so they already had a six-year 
uh, head start on us, okay? So then we went into the, uh, the first decade of existence and uh, Inter didn't have a stadium. You know, this is all basically amateur stuff at the time. Uh, you know, these are people that were not professional soccer players. I don't, I don't know if professional soccer existed at the time, probably didn't, at least not in Brazil. And, um, you know, these were young men that uh, had regular jobs and uh, joined the club and started playing. So throughout the first decade, the, the, the club didn't have a stadium or anything like that. And they rented, uh, they rented a, a space in the city where they would play their games. And uh, their first little taste of uh, glory started happening uh, in 1913 only four years after they uh, became, you know, uh, were founded. And that's when they won the uh, city championship, the Porto Alegre city championship. Now at the time, of course, there was no such thing as a, as a national tournament. Um, I think barely, even if anything, there might not have, not have been a state championship yet at that point, but there was a city championship and International won that in 1913, 14, 15, 16, and 17. I think they won it four times in a row. So maybe it was from 13 to 17 or 13 to 16, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Uh, here it says five times in, uh, from 13 to 1917. So that's not bad for, for the first decade. And that's basically how it started. The, the team colors are red and white. Uh, at the time, they had striped shirts, as you can see here. And uh, then that takes us into the 20s. Now, the 20s, uh, the place that they uh, would... Uh, they, that they rented this the um the field that they played in uh they uh lost that uh field and um uh, and they had to find a new place to stay now this caused a lot of problems and uh eventually the um uh the team almost closed closed its doors um so so about 10 years after uh, Internacional uh, came to exist, uh, it almost closed its doors uh, in, in the mid-20s. But luckily, there were people uh, in the club already that um, worked hard to make sure that that didn't happen. And by 1930, the new decade, the 20s, they didn't win much, okay? Uh, they didn't, uh, you know, they, they didn't have a stadium. So obviously there was a lot of problems going on in the 20s. But by the 1930s, in 1930 uh, or late 20s, the team, the club, uh, found a new, uh, uh, new lot that they could, uh, uh, that they could uh, build a stadium on. And that lot, became uh, the Estadio dos Eucaliptos, the uh, Eucalyptus Stadium, uh, which was inaugurated in 1931. Now, this was, for the time, a pretty nice uh, stadium to have for what was basically not, you know, turning into a professional club. Uh, players were already getting some sort of financial help and all that, but it's far from um, what we know of uh, soccer is today. So in 1931, uh, Internacional built and inaugurated the Eucalyptus Stadium. Uh, let's see here if there's a nice photo that we can see. Here's just a photo of the, of the grandstand there. But this stadium, in 1950, it would host the World Cup. Uh, it hosted, I believe, two or three games during the 1950 World Cup that was held in Brazil. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Mexico played a game there, and I think they tied it. And there's a, some stories about how the Mexican team spent the night out in Porto Alegre the night before and, um, and uh, showed up to the game uh, very tired and did not win it because of that. Don't know how true that is, but that's the legend. That's a story behind it. But yes, Internacional in 1950 hosted the World Cup at this stadium. But let's go back here, back to 1930. So with the formation, with, with the building of the stadium, as happens with many clubs and many sports around the world, when you build a stadium, your own stadium, a lot of times this turns into success for the team. And that's exactly what happened when Inter built the stadium. 
In the 1930s, uh, Inter started building uh, a very strong team. Uh, by the uh, late 30s, what was known as, translated in English, the Steam Rollers team was formed. That was a team full of um, great players. In Portuguese, it's the Holo Compressor. In English, steamrollers, because they steamrolled everybody, all the competition. And by the uh, late 30s, that team uh, was being formed. Uh, and then in the 1940s, Inter basically dominated in the state. By now, we have already had the uh, state championship going on. And in the state championship, you have uh, uh, Rio Grande do Sul's uh, a decent sized state. Uh, you have Porto Alegre as the capital. And at the time, you had not only Internacional, you had Gremio, you had uh, Henner, which is. Uh, which was, a, which was basically a, a conglomerate company. They built stuff, they had stores, and they decided to put a team together at some point. Uh, there, was, there were other teams also, Cruzeiro in Porto Alegre, uh, and then you had all the teams out in the countryside, and that's when the, the state championship was formed. And in the 1940s, Internacional, with the steamroller team, dominated. They won eight out of the 10 championships in the 1940s, okay, um, just dominated it. And at that point in time, it started to develop that the state championship in Rio Grande do Sul was almost always won by either Internacional or Gremio, and occasionally by somebody else. But that would come to an end fairly soon. So in the 1940s, Internacional, with their new stadium, started collecting state championships. There was no Brasileirão yet. There was no Brazilian championship. So the world revolved around the state championship. And the rivalry between Internacional and Grêmio just grew more and more. But in the 1940s, with the steamrollers, we just crushed them. And Internacional went on to win eight out of ten state championships which takes us into the 50s. Okay, takes us into the 50s. Here's another shot of the stadium, as you can see there. In the 50s, it continued uh, for at least the first half of the decade. Uh, Internacional continued with, uh, with their stars. They now had uh, a second version of the steamrollers, uh, which they called Jolinho, uh, which is basically... Uh, uh, you know, a dream team number two, let's just say. And, um, and in, that, in that part of the decade, they essentially um, dominated the first half, okay? They continued to win. They won something like, uh, you know, 14 of 15 uh, or 14 of 16 state championships taken us all the way to the mid 50s and that's when something very interesting happened in 1956 if I'm not mistaken might have been 1954 might have been 1956 I think it was 56 in 1956 neither Gremio nor Internacional won the state championship a team called Henner with an R R E N N E R a team that does not exist anymore won the state championship. It was also a team from Porto Alegre. And as I mentioned before, it was a team that was basically, um, my, actually my grandfather worked at that company uh, in the 1940s and 50s, and I think into the 60s. And uh, it was a company that manufactured all kinds of stuff um, from clothing to, you know, dishes to paint. Later on, they, they were, well known and I think still are in Brazil as a retail store. So they made a lot of stuff. But in the 50s they, or in the 40s, they decided to build a team. And in 1956, they won the state championship. They had their own little stadium. And they won the state championship in 1956. That was Henner, okay, with an R. But what happened was a couple of years later, um, the owner decided you know, they didn't want to support soccer anymore, and 
henna soccer team closed and didn't exist any longer. But what happened was in 1956, that was the last time a team that was not Internacional or Grêmio won the state championship until I think it was 1999 or 1998. So we went 40 something years with just Internacional and Grêmio fighting over the state championship, one winning it here, one winning it there. But as history shows us, for the most part, it was never a back and forth. It was never a one, I'll win this year, you win next year kind of thing. It happened in chunks. It happened in, in almost decades. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Internacional won uh, most of the championships from the 40s to the mid 50s. And then we had Henner win in 56. But then after that, Internacional had a little bit of a, here's a stadium also, you can see the stadium there. And then after uh, that, Internacional in the 1960s or in the late 50s and in the 1960s encountered some problems. Uh, Gremio kind of took over the, the championship. They started winning and they also now had a very long sequence of titles. Uh, I think they maxed out at seven before Inter won one and then they started winning it again, Gremio. So we had from the mid 50s to the late 60s, uh, Gremio dominating the scene in Porto Alegre and in Rio Grande do Sul. Gremio had also just built a stadium, so that might be another indication and proof that when you build a stadium, good things happen. So what happened then? Uh, so we went into the 60s and uh, Gremio dominated for a while. And Inter Stadium now was getting a little old. They hosted the World Cup. I might also want to mention that in 1956, Internacional was the base of the Brazilian national team for the Pan American Games. And, uh, and Internacional, representing Brazil, won that Pan American Games in 1956. This would come to happen again later in the 80s, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but anyway, uh, back to the 60s, Internacional now wanted to build another stadium, a new stadium, something bigger. The club was getting big, had tons of fans, and Eucalyptus Stadium was getting small for the size uh, of the fan base that, that Internacional had. So by the uh, mid-60s, Internacional started planning a new stadium. They, they got some uh, property um, by the river, uh, River Guaiba in Porto Alegre. They literally were given, I, I believe they were given land on water by the city. So they had land, but it was on water. So they literally had to build the stadium that we know of today as the Beta Hugh Stadium on top of water. And that's exactly what they did. They build uh, this gigantic stadium, especially for the time, as you can see here in the photos, on what used to be river, okay? And that stadium, the Beta Hugh, was uh, finished in 1960, it was inaugurated in 1969. And the stadium and the building of the stadium changed the fortunes of Internacional forever at that point. Yet another stadium being built and another boom happening after the stadium was built in 1969. Starting in 69, Internacional would uh, win the Gaúcho uh, State Championship for a sequence, a record sequence of eight in a row. From 1969 to 1976, Internacional won all the state championships. And at that time, also, um, soccer was expanding in Brazil from just regional tournaments to national tournaments. And, um, and in 1971, the Brazilian championship uh, was inaugurated. It was the first Brazilian championship in 19. 71, the first real Brazilian championship in 1971. And Internacional in the 70s 
And as you can see with these photos here, uh, Internacional is known as the club of the decade in Brazil in 1970. There is no other club in Brazil that can compete with Internacional in the 1970s. Um, you know, a lot of fans today from other teams, they uh, have a bad habit of um, saying that Internacional is a club that um, just, uh, just appeared in the um, 2000s, right? So a lot of fans from, you know, some, some of them say it jokingly, and some of them say it out of pure ignorance. They just don't understand or know the history. So be it a Flamengo fan, a Gremio fan, some of them might say, oh, Internacional was born in 2006 when they won the Club World Cup for the first time. But that's far from, that's far from the truth. The truth is that Internacional in the 1970s is known as the club of the decade in Brazil. And why is that? Because in 1970, not only did Internacional dominate the state championship, but more importantly, Internacional dominated the national championship. The national championship was inaugurated in 1971. And already in the uh, early 70s, Inter was building a super, super strong team with, uh, as you see in the photo there, uh, with Falco, which one of the greatest Brazilian players of all time. And uh, in the early 70s, Inter was already competing uh, with the other clubs, uh, you know, face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, one -on one-on-one, good competition. And uh, I think in 1972, 73, we, we came close uh, to, to winning the titles. But in 1975, Internacional actually won the um, Brazilian championship for the first time. Now, this was before many teams, uh, big teams that we know of today, had won it. And Internacional won it in 75. Internacional won it in 76. And then Internacional won it again in 1979, undefeated, okay? Internacional won the Brazilian championship three times in the 70s. And in 1979, they won it undefeated. Something that has not happened since. Didn't happen before and hasn't happened since. So now think about it. Internacional was undefeated, won the world, uh, the, the Brazilian Cup three times by 1979. And now let's add up how many uh, champ Brazilian championships some of the other teams had won up until then. Let's say Flamengo up until 1979, zero. Let's add Grêmio. How many Grêmio uh, national championships did they have by 1979? Zero. Uh, how about, let's see, uh, Flamengo, oh, I already did Flamengo, let's, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with Cruzeiro from uh, Belo Horizonte. How many national championships they did have by 1979? Zero. How about, um, let's see, Corinthians from Sao Paulo. How many Brazilian championships did Corinthians have by 1979? Zero. So. The point is, all these clubs combined had zero championships, Brazilian championships, and Internacional had three by 1979. So when they say Internacional was born in 2006, it's ridiculous, and facts show that it's ridiculous. So um, I arrived in Brazil as a kid in 1979, and that's when I um, became a fan of the team. I'm going to show you a little clip here of the first, uh, the first uh, title that we won in 1975 here. Let's take a look at this here. So uh, just check this out. Let's see here. All right, check that out. So 
So this is uh, footage. This is footage of um, back in the 1970s when people went to the movie theaters. There would be uh, highlights of sports filmed on film, not shot on video, but actual film. And they would play it before the movie started, like highlights. I mean, just beautiful imagery. And this is from the 1975 final between Internacional and Cruzeiro at the Beira Rio in Porto Alegre. And you're going to see here the goal by Figueroa that gave Internacional the title. Here's the foul on Valdomiro. He's one of Inter's legendary players. And that was the foul. And here's the foul being right there to Figueroa. He heads it in. 1-0, Inter wins the first, their first Brazilian championship. Number five is Falcão, another legendary player. Inter's most legendary player later on, later went on to play at Roma. And as you can see at the time, they would fit up to 100,000 people in the stadium. They really squeezed them in. Back then it wasn't, it was basically stands with no seats and you could just squeeze people in there. So now I think we're going to see the end here. So after this, uh, the following year, 1976, Internacional would play at home again, the final against Corinthians and win two to one and win the second Brazilian championship. Had I lived in Brazil, I probably was old enough to already uh, uh, experience uh, that, but I did not live in Brazil at the time. So, uh, okay, so now we go into the 1980s all right so we're gonna go into the 1980s after the uh, after the the, the three time uh, championship there and the 80s are a um, complicated decade um, I think probably looked at unfairly uh, today it wasn't nearly as bad as uh, even Inter fans today think it was. I was there from, 19, from late 1979 to 1985, I lived in Porto Alegre. So I was there and I experienced this in person. Uh, luckily I got there in 79 when the Brazilian, Brazilian championship was started. So I was able to uh, see Inter win the Brazilian championship uh, th for the third time undefeated. And uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't experience an inter loss until 1980. I went through the part of the 70s that I lived in Brazil without seeing Inter lose a game. And it wasn't until early 1980 that I actually saw Inter lose a match. But the decade was uh, not full of uh, conquests, but a lot of close calls. And uh, it started in 1980 when Inter went to the Libertadores and um, they made it all the way to the final match against Nacional from Uruguay. And we lost that 1-0 uh, on the last match in Montevideo. Now, at the time, the Libertadores was not as important as it is today for Brazilian teams in particular. Uh, as a matter of fact, the game in Porto Alegre against Nacional, the stadium wasn't even full. Uh, and we tied that 0-0, and then we went to Uruguay and lost it 1-0. It wasn't later into the 80s that um, suddenly Brazilian teams really started taking the Libertadores series, and that's a shame, because we were very close, very, very close to winning that uh, Libertadores, and that would have really changed uh, history uh, in a way. A lot of the, a lot of the, the fighting between Internacional and Grêmio 
a lot of the uh, taunts by fans would have been a totally different had we won a Libertadores first because Gremio went on to win the Libertadores in 83 and we didn't win one until 2006. Um, but so yeah, I wish that in 1980 we had just won that one. But unfortunately, um, our big team from the 70s was starting to break up. Falco was, was, had already been sold to Roma and he still played with Inter, but he was already a sold player and he was leaving. Not that that mattered, not that that affected the way he played, but it, you could tell that uh, things were changing and the team was going to change. So Inter started the year, uh, the decade in the 80s, and, um, and it didn't do bad. Uh, like I said, Libertadores final in 1980 also finished in third place in the Brazilian championship. We got very close to winning it for a fourth time, but we lost the semifinal against Atlético Mineiro. And... Um, and basically that eliminated us. Atletico went to play Flamengo in the final. Uh, so close call. 1981, 1982, this shirt I'm wearing right now, I'll show you here. Uh, this jersey that I'm wearing right now is the team's jersey from 1982. And as a matter of fact, you can probably see in this photo, Andrea Luis, the team captain here, is wearing this jersey, same jersey I'm wearing now. Okay. As a matter of fact, it is the last international jersey, the last international jersey to not have advertisement on it. Starting in 1983, the team would have advertisement on the jersey and ever since. So this is the last jersey, Le Coq Sportif brand, French brand, uh, last one to not have advertisement. And that was 1982. So, uh, so in 1981, 82, 83 and 84, International won the state championship. We dominated that, okay? Remember, we had one from 69 to 76. Then Gremi won in 77. We won it again in 78. Then Gremi won it in 79 and 80. And then we won it in 81, 82, 83, 84. So we won it four times in a row. That's when I was living there. It was great. But the Brazilian championship, we didn't do much at that point. We were always kind of finishing in the middle or close to the top. In uh, 1985, we got all the way to like, I think, uh, fourth place. And, uh, and then Gremio started dominating the uh, state championships in the 80s. One note, what is Andre Luiz holding here? He's holding the Juan Gumper trophy. That's a trophy for a tournament in Barcelona uh, that, uh, that they have. They have a tournament there, I think, on a yearly basis, and they invited Internacional to play. And we won that tournament in 1982 in Barcelona against Barcelona, and we took the trophy. And it was also the debut of Maradona playing for Barcelona, uh, and this is the this was a matchup, uh, Maradona, and that's Inter's defender Mauro Galvão, and we ended up winning this tournament here. Now, this was the first time that we won something on top of Barcelona. Not the last time, though, as we'll talk about. And by the way, I forgot to mention earlier on. Let me go back a bit here. I forgot to mention something. I forgot to mention something a little bit earlier on. Another reason why I'm doing this in English. The other day, I was uh, at the gas station here uh, in New Jersey, uh, filling the tank in my car. And the gas attendant, okay, in New Jersey, uh, we, uh, we don't pump our own gas. We have a gas attendant. And the gas attendant was putting uh, gas in my car. And for some reason, he started talking to me, and we got to talk in soccer. This is all within a two-minute period. And... Uh, I told him that, uh, you know, I'm Brazilian, uh, I've lived in America most of my life, so we got talking soccer. He was from Egypt, and then he asked me, um, so what's your, what's your team, Real Madrid or Barcelona? So I looked at him, I go, none of them. I don't root for Real Madrid, I don't root for Barcelona, I beat them. 
You know, I beat Barcelona. I don't root for Barcelona. So that's the that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this in English, because we need to get we need to get Brazilian soccer and Brazilian clubs out there internationally, something that has not been done. People around the world love soccer, love Brazilian soccer, but, but you know, where are they going to hear about uh, uh, soccer, uh, maybe in a language they understand, right? People in the United States, they root for Chelsea, Manchester United, uh, Barcelona. I get sick of that, you know? So do my, my little part here. So that was one of the other reasons. So back to the 1980s, okay, back to the 1980s, we, uh, we uh, won this tournament here in, uh, in, in, in uh, Spain, in Barcelona, okay? Now, I haven't mentioned many players yet, but in the 70s, we had Valdomiro, we had Falcón, we had Batista, uh, endless talent that went through. In the 80s, then we had Dunga, you guys know who Dunga is? He's the captain of the Brazilian national team in 1994. Uh, he's also wearing the same jersey I'm wearing right now. Tafarel showed up in the 19, late 1980s. Uh, we, we, have, we have been a, uh, uh, a maker of many, many great players, okay? So the 80s then continues. So the mid 80s on, the mid 80s, on we started having trouble again uh in 1987 we almost won the brazilian championship fi finishing in second in 1988 we almost won the brazilian championship again finishing again in second and this time the final was at home against bahia and all we needed to do was win the game and we tied 0-0 and we finished in second now that's a rare thing that's a rare thing. That's a rare thing for Internacional to um, lose a championship at home, especially a Brazilian championship. In 75, we won it at home. In 76, we won it at home. In 79, we won it at home. And then in 88 against Bahia, all we had to do was win one nothing, and we would have had our fourth title. And we tied 0-0, zero, zero, so we lost that. So that was a sign. That was a sign of things to come uh, throughout the '90s. Uh, in, in 1989, we also we got into the Libertadores. We did well, um, but then we uh, lost. Uh, I think it was the semifinal to Olympia, and we were out. And then after that, the '90s came along, and the '90s were a disaster for Inter. Uh, there was one little glimmer. Of, uh, of something good in the 90s, which was in um, uh, 1992, I believe it was. 1992, we won the Copa do Brasil, and, which is like kind of like a, a, a smaller version of, uh, of, of the Brazilian championship, uh, a cup, cup version of it. And we won that. But other than that, uh, we, we didn't win many uh, state championships. We won a few of them. And we didn't win any national championships. And the club was in trouble. It was uh, not doing well at all. It wasn't doing well at all money-wise, producing players. And uh, it was really a bad decade. Me personally, I had moved back to the United States. And at the time, without internet and without you know TV, Brazilian TV in the United States, I really did not follow it much. So I was actually lucky that I didn't go through what all Inter fans went through in the 90s. So I did not experience that. It wasn't until 2000, living in the United States, that uh, Brazilian TV uh, uh, appeared on, you know, on American uh, uh, you know, satellite systems. And I was able to get back into Brazilian soccer. And then I had an internet also. And, uh, and I, was, I was able to start following things again. And once again, my timing was very good. In 1979, when I arrived in Brazil, my timing was perfect. And then in 2000, when I started following Internacional again, uh, things started slowly happening. Uh, not in 2000, not in 2001, and definitely not in 2002, which was not a good year, where we almost fell to the second division. But, but in 2003, uh, Internacional started 
got a new coach, Murisi Hamalu, and started building a solid team, a base of a team. And the team started improving in 2003. The team got better in 2004. And then in 2005, uh, International was basically one step away from winning the Brazilian title. And then something unbelievable happened. I'm not going to get into it very long here, but basically International was at the top of the standings. International was at the top of the standings and uh, the CIB, CBF, the Brazilian Confederation, uh, undid, canceled 11 games that had been played already because a referee had stated that in one game he tried to manipulate the score. This was a game that was not related to Internacional. Um, and this referee said that he tried to manipulate the score of this other game. And therefore, what happened was CBF got all 11 games this referee was in and canceled all of them. Okay. They undid it. They undid 11 games. So what happens is this. Two of those games were games Internacional played in that, that they had won. Two games Inter won. And uh, in no way did the referee say he manipulated that score at all of those games. But nonetheless, they annulled those games. All right? So now Internacional had to play those games over again. And Internacional did play those games over again. And they won those two games all over again. But here's the thing. Corinthians was in third place when the games were canceled. And the night they canceled the games because the games were canceled, suddenly Corinthians was in first place. Because Internacional got six points taken away for no fault of their own. Corinthians, out of those two games they had canceled, they had lost one and tied the other. So they had nothing to lose. They lost one point from that. Internacional lost six points. So for no fault of their own, Internacional went from first place on a Saturday night to third place on a uh, Sunday morning. So uh, that was unbelievable at the time, but that's what they did. And then Corinthians got to play their two games over again with a different ref. And Corinthians won those games. So think about it. Corinthians got to play their loss and their tie over again, and they recovered five points. And that put them over the top, and that basically made them Brazilian championships, champions. And... Uh, to, you know, to make things even worse, this photo that you're seeing on the screen there right now is a key match between Internacional and Corinthians. Right here, Chinga on the left and Corinthians goalkeeper Fabio Costa on the right. And what we're seeing there was basically the match to decide the Brazilian championship. Even though there's no final this was after the cancellation of the 11 matches from that ref, okay? Inter had now basically uh, climbed back again and was one point behind Corinthians. They should have been three, four, five points above them by right. But they're down by one point and they're playing Corinthians in Sao Paulo. And on this play right there that you're seeing on the screen, and you can look it up on YouTube later, Chinga gets fouled in the box by Fabio Costa. You can see Fabio Costa dive with his foot up and he takes down Chinga. And what happens? Penalty? Nope. No penalty. Red card for Chinga for simulating a foul. That's what happened. The ref gave Chinga a red card for simulating a foul that, did, that existed 
as you can see, if you watch this in full speed, that goalkeeper comes with his foot up in the air and takes Jenga down. They're basically in front of the goal. The goalkeeper is about to get uh, passed by, by Jenga and scored on. The score was 1-1 at the time. That's how the game ended. Could have ended 2-1 here. And Chinga got a red card and Inter played with one player less for the rest of the game. So Inter got no help, uh, quite the contrary, from refs. And that actually started a phase where this happened a lot uh, as recent as a couple of days ago. <laughs> and this was in 2005. So anyway, so, uh, so that was 2005. And things looked bad, but we were getting better. And, uh, and everything came together a year later in 2006 when we won the Copa Libertadores for the first time in 2006 with Fernando, with uh, Chinga, the same guy in this photo, with Rafael Sobis, with Henteria, and we would win it for the first time. Uh, Corinthians, as a side note, they would go down to the second division in 2006. So, you know, justice was served. And then at the end of the year in 2006, Internacional would go play for the first time the Club World Cup. And they played Barcelona in the final. The same Barcelona we played in 1980. Remember here? 1982, we got a cup over Barcelona. Well, in 2006, we did it again. We beat Barcelona in the final club, FIFA Club World Cup. And we won the, uh, the trophy, which now sits in the museum at the Beta Hughes Stadium. And that was 2006, and that was only the beginning. Uh, things kept going for Inter. And um, within the next five years, we would win another Libertadores in 2010, our second. This time, we had D'Alessandro as one of the stars of the team. And we also won a Sul Americana. Uh, we won more state championships. We won a Recopa, a couple of Recopas. We, uh, we, we did very well from 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, each one of those years, we won at least one international trophy. And that's how that decade pretty much ended. And we come into the current decade. Um, and in 2011, uh, things started slightly going downhill for us. So everything comes in phases. You know, you have good phases. You have good phases, you have bad phases. It's not, it's not always gonna, you're not always gonna be on top. And uh, in 2011 was the last year of this uh, great moment that we had, okay? Um, in 2011 and 12 and 13, we uh, had uh, decent teams. Uh, we were fighting for, t for, uh, for titles, but uh, we didn't uh, win anything uh, in the same manner that we were winning them before. And one thing that we started doing, though, as you can see in these photos here, is we started uh, um, remodeling our stadium. The Beta Hue was now going on, you know, uh, 40 years, and it was aging. And as you can see in the photos, uh, after much much many 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 fights and arguments and debating and and plans uh, a plan was finally picked to remodel the stadium into as you see it there in the middle and on the right the middle photo is it being remodeled and um, it looks beautiful now it's a beautiful stadium a modernized beautiful stadium it then hosted the world cup again in 2014 so international is one of the few clubs to own a stadium or two stadiums that have hosted two different World Cups. And we did that in 1950 and in 2014 at the Brazil World Cup 
in 2014. Uh, but that was kind of the highlight for us in the 2010s, because in 2015, we got very close to uh, winning. Um, in 2015, we got very close to winning um, the Copa Libertadores, but it didn't happen. And, um, and then in 2016, things finally collapsed. And what do I mean by that? Uh, in 2016, by 2016, our rivals, Gremio, had been relegated to the second division twice. Twice. And that was a, that was a great thing we had to, you know, joke around with them, that they had fallen to the second division twice. Well, in 2016, it was our turn, unfortunately. The team could not win any games. We made horrible decisions. And, uh, and, um, and we just kept losing until we were relegated to the second division. By the way, um, I forgot to mention in 2010 when we won the Copa Libertadores, we did go to the uh, FIFA Club World Cup and we didn't win that one. We uh, were planning on making the final against Inter Milan, the other Inter. But unfortunately, we lost the uh, semifinal to an African club, and uh, which was a total surprise. And... Um, you know, we were careless. And, um, you know, that was basically kind of the start of, of, of the downfall when we lost that uh, semifinal match against uh, Mazembe. And uh, in 2016, we were relegated to the second division of Brazilian Championship, something we thought would never happen, but it happened. Luckily, in 2017, we got an organized team and we, we, uh, we, we didn't win the, the Serie B. We finished in second, which I'm actually happy about. I didn't want to win that. I just wanted to get back into the Serie A. And uh, by 2018, we were back. And we've been uh, pretty solid since. We have not won any more titles. We have not been winning. Uh, I think we won a, a Gaúcho Championship in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. But we haven't won since. And we haven't won a Brazilian championship since. But one last thing. One last thing. In 2020, Internacional was rising up again. Right? Rising up. And then what happened in 2020? What happened in 2005 when we were robbed of Brazilian championship? It happened again in 2020. I'm not going to get into it right now. Um but I'll do a video about it some other time. But basically, Flamengo was handed a Brazilian championship just a couple of months ago. And in 2009 also, but that's yet a story for another video. And anyway, uh, we finished officially in second place 2020. Should have been first place, but officially we finished in second place. And, uh, and, and that was it, and that's where we're at now. Uh, Fighting to survive, we're at the so that so we're going to talk about now uh, what's happening with international right now, okay? So right now uh, we are in the Libertadores, 2021. We just got out of the group phase. We finished in first place in the group, and we are going into the round of 16 against Olympia, okay? Our coach Miguel Angel Ramirez is, is not he's a Spaniard, and he's 50-50 as far as who likes him and who doesn't like him. It seems like the fans are divided. He's a young coach, um, not that much experience. There seems to be a movement to get him out. Meanwhile, there's another movement to keep him in. And people are just, you know, confronting each other on that. Uh, I think every coach deserves a chance to, to get the job done. Why are you going to hire them if you're just going to fire them two months later? It doesn't make any sense. You're just going to spend money and, and pay... Uh, millions in um, fines. So, but anyway, uh, Miguel Angel Ramirez is, is the coach and Internacional is in the Libertadores round of 16. Uh, Internacional did not win the state championship this year. We just finished losing to uh, our rival Gremio. Gremio did not make it into Libertadores, by the way. Um, and like I said, in 2020, which ended in February, the Brazilian championship because of COVID, 
uh, Internacional finished in second, uh, should have won it, but uh, VAR and the refs decided that it was best for Flamengo to be the champion this year. And that's just not me saying, that's just a, a fact. All you got to do is watch the videos and you will, will know. Just watch the videos of the games, the last three games, Flamengo, and watch the last three games of Inter, the highlights. You'll see exactly what happened there. There's no, there's no ifs or buts about it, okay? And uh, so that's where we're at. Uh, we have, I think, uh, a decent team. Uh, it's having some problems uh, of inconsistency. Uh, we win a game 6-1 against Olympia, but then we can't beat a Venezuelan team at home. You know, uh, soccer is kind of changing right now. Uh, football, soccer is kind of changing right now. And, uh, you know, it's different strategies, uh, different things happening. Defenders seem to be more involved with, uh, with the ball, attacking and all that. And um, we, have, we have to see where that goes. But uh, that's where we're at. Internacional is in Libertadores. We start the Copa do Brasil tomorrow okay which we haven't been doing very well in the copa over the the decades we seem to there's just too many competitions we seem to be distracted many times and you're spreading your players thin um and uh it's not um uh the players just get uh get um tired wasted um uh, you know and uh and it's hard to to keep it up keep a team playing well for a long time when you have all kinds of tournaments happening back to back to back and you're playing three games a week and you're traveling across the country the size of brazil and the continent size of the south america so uh so that's where we're at so that's uh what this was this was uh sc international in english episode one we talked about the history of international and how we're doing now okay copa libertadores right now copa do brazil starting and the Brasileirão just started, and we were winning 2-0 the first game, and we gave it up in the second half, 2-2 draw against Sport Recife, and that's where we're at. Uh, we're kind of in a question mark land right now. We don't know exactly what's happening. We could be great, and we might not be, but we'll find out. So, uh, again, this is uh, Internacional in English. This is for people that live around the world that might want to know a little bit more about Internacional. I'm bringing it to you in English, maybe on a weekly basis, bi-weekly basis. I will take questions, comments when I do this live, but I will only take them in English for this segment, okay? If you want to say something, say it in English, all right? So uh, thanks, for, uh, uh, thanks for watching. I did this live, no uh, script, so hopefully uh, it was informative. All right, thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time at uh, SC International in English. Thank you.